Hey, what's up? It's Brianna. So today we're going to be testing out the brand new Beauty Bay Love Notes palette. And honestly, I could not pass this palette up. When I saw it launch and like teased over on Trend Mood, I literally set an alarm and got it right when it launched. Like added that baby right to the cart because this palette is so pretty. I mean, even with the packaging, it is stunning. But what really caught my eye about this palette is that even though it is a Valentine's Day palette, I don't feel like it's like one of those ones I would only use around this time of year. Like I just feel like this palette is going to be perfect going into spring and even summer. Like I feel like you can just do so much with it because again you get like these really nice whimsical pastels the shimmers in here look extra sparkly and super poppin and even like this palette has like a couple of pinks and like peachy shades like you can do so much with it because I feel like a lot of times with like Valentine's Day palettes or even like holiday palettes in general a lot of times they're just so like curated to that holiday they're just very niche and it's really hard to use them throughout the year unless you're going to do like a specific kind of look with them whereas with this one I feel like it's very versatile as always for my eyes I'm just gonna go in with my ABH eye primer because this is literally like the creme de la creme and I'm just going to be applying it to like this bigger shader brush I have. You can use literally anything, even your fingers. I just don't like having makeup on my hands, especially cream products. It's just kind of like look to me. But I'm just going to be applying it all over my lid up to my brow. Making sure I'm putting it anywhere that I'm going to be putting shadow. Again, this palette is very light with the pastels. Like, they're almost like whitish, kind of like icy kind of based. So I would definitely recommend using a light colored tacky primer just to make sure that they pop. I know I haven't tried them yet, but just trust me on that. Like, it'll just make them like even more poppin'. But the first shade I want to go in with on this palette is this pinky kind of like matte shade. And this one's called Handkerchief. This shade's technically probably called Handkerchief, but I'm just not fancy like that. But I'm just going to be taking it on this Anastasia A25. And oh my, like, ooh, that is pigmented like I did not know what to expect but I was not expecting that right away and again I'm popping it in my crease and then blending it upwards towards my brow and I'm just gonna go in with a second layer yeah so like the first layer it's a little bit softer but it builds up super easy like I'd even say like the second layer looks like it does in the pan you can see it's not like dusting off or anything either, but I am kind of nosy, so I'm going to go in with a third layer. So far, so good. Like, again, it's not even like over blending either, and you can see it doesn't look like chunky. Because sometimes like lighter colors, they'll just have like this like patchy, like weird situation in the crease. And I am not seeing it with this one. Now, I don't know if this is going to look good, but we're just, we're going to roll with it anyways. But I want to go in with this dark purple called Glove. And I'm not too sure how it's going to work with like the peachy, kind of like neon pinkish situation that we have going on right now. But you know what? We're going to see. So I'm just going to be taking this shade on this Morphe M507. It's just like a really small little blending brush. And so far... I'd say it has a good amount of pigmentation right away. And it's blending out fairly nice too. So I'm just going to go in with a second layer. And I'd say it definitely has more of like a buildable formula to it. Now I'm not going to smoke it out like super far. Because I do want that pinky peachy shade to kind of shine through a little bit. But you can see like initially it's like super like rich and it looks like it does in the pan but the more that you work it out the more kind of like sheared out it gets but even though it does that it doesn't give me like a patchy kind of like blend it's just a little bit more buildable so i'm gonna go in with just a tiny bit more and again i'm just kind of like rolling it in my crease and then doing these little circular motions to blend it up and then i'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of handkerchief and then I'm just going to buff out the edge. I'm going to apply a little bit more of Glove. But I mean, like on the fourth layer, you can kind of see it's like not as like rich as it looks in the pan. For how it applies initially though, like with being so intense, I would say if you're somebody that does the pack and blend method where you go from dark to light and you pack it down and then blend out the edge, it'll probably be a lot more intense for you than it is with my method. Then I'm just going to take a little bit more and kind of like wing out this outer V just a little bit. I'll be honest though, I wouldn't say that this is like the best matte purple I've ever used. Cause again, like I really have been having to build it up, but it's also not like the worst either. I just prefer the purple formula in the 42 um, bright matte palette that Beauty Bay has. I think that one's just a little bit better. So off camera, when I was blending out the other eye, I tilted my head up and you see what I mean? Like it's not 
that great of a purple. You can kind of see it looks a little bit chunky and a little bit weird. Again, it's not like the worst purple I've ever used. Like, I've definitely used worse, but it's not my favorite formula either. Like, you can see, like, from a distance, it's not bad. But when you start getting up close and, like, really looking at it, you can see it's a little bit uneven in certain areas. It does give a little bit of, like, a harsh line over time. It's just, it's kind of, like, one of those more, like, tricky formulas. Like, I'm just going to kind of, like, fluff on the edge using a clean brush. But you can kind of see, like, it just... It's a little bit funny. So I'm just going to go back in with that handkerchief shade. Handkerchief. I don't know why I want to say handkerchief, but... I'm just going to like fluff out the edge and maybe that'll kind of like help finesse it a little and then go back in with that brush with glove. Yeah, I think we just need a little bit more glove. Again, it's not like dusting off or anything. It's just, you can kind of see like right in here, it's just not great. So what I'm going to do is cut the crease and maybe after I cut the crease things will kind of just marry and look a little bit better because sometimes that just kind of happens. But I'm just going to go again in with that ABH eye primer and I'm just going to take it on this little brush from Sigma. It's an E10. Sometimes, you know, you just have to walk away from the blending situation and then maybe once you start putting things in different places it'll start looking a little bit better. But what I'm going to do is just look directly into the mirror and then go slightly above my natural crease following the shape. And then after I have just like a rough shape down, I'm just gonna clean it up. Once that line is created, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of that eye primer on this concealer brush from Anastasia. It is a number 18. And it's just like one of those like really like synthetic kind. And I'm just gonna feel everything underneath doing a little tapping motion. Cause you don't wanna do like a really hard like swiping motion because what'll happen is you'll disturb everything underneath. It could pale, it could act a little weird. So you just wanna make sure that you're lightly tapping. So now once that's dry, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of glove and pack it onto the outer edge of the cut crease. And I'm just using this like domed little brush from Morphe. I'm just gonna take a little bit more. Again, I'm like pressing it in here and this has probably been dry for like 20 minutes or so. You can kind of see it's just a little bit chunky. So now we're going to start working on the lid and I'm just saying like, oh, like I've been waiting for this because I absolutely love beauty based shimmers. They are by far one of my all time holy grail formulas because they're just so creamy and pigmented and also like they always have so much glitter to them and so much shine. But the first shade I want to go in with is this like sparkly, it's like a pastel like periwinkle and then it has like baby blue reflect and it's called Princess. Now I always have high hopes for beauty based shimmers so let's hope they do not disappoint. Shade, I already love it. Now it is applying a little bit weird right away. Like it's really like adhering to my eye primer for some reason. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of my brush. Whew. Yeah, and Beauty Bay never disappoints with the shimmers. The shade is amazing. And I'm also kind of like overlapping it with that purple that we just did. Just to kind of like finesse it. But ooh, she is popping. And then what I'm going to do is just take a little bit more of that glove shade. I'm just lightly tapping the edge of the shimmer to help blend it in. But you can see it's like kind of like lifting a little bit. This is just not my favorite purple formula. I think I fixed it pretty good. I just kind of like layered in the shimmer a little bit farther and then went in with the matte on top. I think it's looking a lot better, especially on this eye. But for the rest of the lid, I'm just going to go in with this like peachy kind of like shimmery shade. And this one's called Bellini. And again, I'm just going to be using a different flat shader brush. And I'm just going to be packing it down. I'm also applying it dry, not damp. But whew, that is so pretty. Again, like it just has so much shine to it. But I am going to go in with a second layer right away. It seems like these shimmers though in this palette you kind of have to dig into the pan just like a little bit to get like the first like layer off just like just the barely top layer of it and then it gets like extra creamy. Now let's go in with a third layer and I got it in my eyelashes. Now this one is kind of getting everywhere more than the purple so you might want to just do your eyes first but whew, those actually go really well together. Sometimes like peach shades don't always go well with purple but I think these two are like a perfect combo. Like, it's just, like, a very, like, interesting, and it has, like, that orange hint to it, but it's not, like, muddy in between the two. 
I really like it. So I just did my complexion off camera and I don't know, I wanted to kind of like play up that pinky like corally shade that we had on the lid. I thought it was really cool. So I tried to like pair my blush with it and kind of do like a lip combo that's kind of like it because I don't know about you but I can't wear like coral lip colors because it always makes my teeth look super crazy yellow so this is kind of what I thought might pair with it. Let me know what you think. But we're going to do the lower lash line now and I'm first just going to go in with that glove shade and I'm just taking it on this brush from Colourpop. This is an E29, just like a small little shader. But you see what I mean though, like the shade packs down a lot better than it does like blending. So that's why I said earlier, maybe if you're somebody that does the dark to light method and you pack and blend your shades, you'll probably like this one a little bit more with your method than I like with mine. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of handkerchief on this brush from Profusion. This is an ES6. And I'm just going to smoke this baby down real far. Now lastly for the inner corner highlight, I'm going to go in with this shade called Chandelier and it's kind of like a white gold and it has like green and like yellow reflect to it. It looks very interesting and I'm wondering how it's going to pair next to that Bellini shade. And I'm just going to be taking this dry on this pencil brush and this one's from Anastasia, it's an A14. But like applied, I don't feel like it looks as yellow as it looks in the pan. Like in the pan it looks like a very cool like yellowy, pinky, white gold kind of shade with like green reflect. I don't really see that when it's applied. It just looks more like a white gold. Because I don't see that green reflect that I see in the pan. Again, like when I say like green, I don't mean like super like bright green. It just has like a little bit of like a green kind of hue to it. I forgot to mention, but that was my second layer with the shade. So we're going to do a third. Oh yeah. In the end though, I think this look turned out really cool and I really like this combination. It kind of like screams spring to me with like a little bit of smokiness, which you guys know I love. But like, is this like my new favorite palette? No. But again, I don't think it's a bad palette either. It's just like a okay, good, all right kind of palette. Like I'll definitely use it again in the future, but I probably won't be using that glove shade. Because again, that was the only shade that gave me any problems today. I really had to layer it up. It was getting a little bit patchy looking in my outer V. It wasn't giving me like a full seamless blend like I thought it was giving me the more that I layered it up. It's just like one of those shades that just doesn't have that great of a formula. If you're looking for really good purples from Beauty Bay, I would definitely recommend the 42 Bright Matte Palette. And honestly, that one is such a steal in general. Like the formula of all the shades in that palette are amazing. And again, they're very pigmented and the purples in there have such a better formula than these. The only thing about that palette though, is that it is completely matte. There's absolutely no shimmers in it. But before you go though, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on Instagram or TikTok, it's at Brianna Faye as well. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!